Hi, I'm Mick from MDC. Today we're going to talk about your XT16 HR family van. To start our journey, we're going to talk about things that you do before you come and turn up to us to pick up your van. One is make sure that you've got a brake controller in your car. The brake controller will assist you in a, uh, your brakes on your van. Okay? With that, you need a 12 pin plug, which has got the bottom 7 is exactly the same as a normal flat 7. All right? But we have another wire going to the number 12 pin, which gives you power for your um, breakaway system. The other thing is your 50 amp Anderson plug, so that's 5 0 Anderson plug. So that's going to help you with your charging of your batteries. So you've got a full battery system when you get to where you're going. Also guys, you need to remove the tow ball off your car. Now saying that, your tongue needs to look like this when you turn up. Okay, so ball off. Okay, so we can attach our receiver that goes on the DO35 or Polyblock, whichever, so therefore we can get you on the road. On hooking up from your, your van to your car, guys, we have a DO35 hitch, all the same on the XT range, okay? So basically it's just the pin that goes underneath it. Basically once you're over the top, with the jockey wheel you wind down as far as it goes, as in like once the jockey wheel becomes loose, all ball weight is here, push the red button, that means it's locked on. Okay, so once this button is pushed and this little arc comes forward, that means it's locked on. To get it off, push the button down, push that back, release the button, and you open up the throat and then you wind the jockey wheel off. But we're, we're hooking you up at the moment, so button down and then 12 pin plug, plug that in just there, secure it. Your Anderson plug, 50 amp, charging of the batteries, plug that in and then chain. By law, you have to cross the chains, okay? So it's a, it does a support role for anything should happen. Okay, once you cross your chains, what it does, it acts as a cradle. So if anything should fail here, it falls into a cradle, so it supports the towing of the van. Obviously, you'll know it's coming off. Instead of, if the chains were um, straight up and down to there, what it could happen is it could dig in, essentially flip on the car, and that's what we don't want. All right, so hence why you've got to cross your chains. Also, breakaway unit. Now, this must be attached to your chassis not to your chains, all right? Has to be to the chassis of your car. So, easiest part on this car is around this bar that's here. If your van comes detached from the car, this, your breakaway unit, on this wire, it pulls out, okay? And then it activates the electric brakes that are in there. So the brake comes on so it doesn't career around the road or anything. Comes on until you can push that back in, resets everything. And then jockey wheel up. So pull the pin, swing it up, make sure those pins go back in through here, handle up, handbrake off, you're done, you're ready to go. On your jockey wheel here guys, every time you're taking it off from the car, be it camping, at home, whatever, what I would suggest is have the wheel running crossways across your van, not vertical with the van but crossways the van seems to support your A-frame a lot better. But also, when you're reversing on, if you miss it a little bit, you're able to move on the wheel itself, not move the whole jockey wheel. So you're moving on the wheel first. So for safety reasons and so forth, and that, make sure you're, you're having your jockey wheel run across your van. On all your caravans, guys, you have four stabilizers, okay? Two at the front, two at the rear. All right, easy is take a bit of pressure off, pull the handle, pull them down so it's nice and vertical. Get your wind down bar, pop it in there, wind her out. Now, remembering that this is a stabilizing unit for your van, this is not a jack. This is not a jacking point, all right? Your jacking points are here, all right, just in front of that. Basically, if you did get a flat tire and so forth, put these down for safety reasons, but these are stabilizers and stabilizers only for your van.
when you're hooking up your gas, check your O-ring, just make sure it's all perfect. Put it in the place provided. Once you've got the proper seal on there, you'll go cook up the rest of your kitchen and then you'll come and turn on the gas. On your 16 family, just behind, behind your two compartments at the front on the right hand side is your filling for your water tanks, be it um, by hose or mains water, it's in here. So the one on the left is filling your water tanks, right is mains water pressure. All right, just underneath that is your breather for when you're filling up your tanks. When hooking up the mains water, you've got to get a three quarter inch Nilex or Nita product to go in there so you can hook up to mains water and then all your taps and everything would come live, but that's what you need to hook up to your mains water pressure. And this little bad boy, when you are hooked up to that, you can leave it closed and coming out of there. Everything underneath the, um, the van is all food grade. The poly tanks, the hoses, they're all food grade. So filling it up, do not use your garden hose. Go out to Bunnings and buy some food grade hose. Your flushing point for your grey water tank is in just in front of the wheel. It's on your right hand side. Key in, open her up, flushing point. Stick your finger in there to get the right size hose that you're going to flush your grey water tank. When you come down to here, there's your hose. You turn that on, basically you can flush your tank. Another little feature is a tap on the front end. You know, if you need to wash your hands, the little ones that have got dirty fingers or whatever want to wash their hands. Once you've got your water pump on or plugged into mains water, right, this becomes activated. All right, so as simple as just turn and tap. This is your external shower. We're just gonna open her up and just show you what you gotta do. You got two nozzles in there, hot and cold, and obviously the hot will come on where if you're using your hot water. And this is your little valve, basically for flow of water. Okay, when you're not in use, just hang that up there. On your 16 family, also you have two storage compartments. Okay, um, again, whatever fits, fits. If it don't fit, don't force it. But in your secondary one is where your diesel heater is. If it's night time, you need to have a look at something. You got a little touch light here. This door, because it's at the rear of the van, handle forward, key in, turn it forward, locks. When you want to open your van, key in, don't touch the handle, turn it to the back. You'll hear it unlock, it'll open up. So when you want to open it, it's key to the back. When you want to lock it, handle forward, key forward. You see a little chrome strip around the door. You can easily just pop that up, comes around and it goes into that little bad boy there. So it latches your door back. You also have a second latch for your door. It's a drop in pin, holds your door in a second position. You don't have to go all the way back to the van. And also with your doors, you have a handle, a big handle inside and you've got a little handle here. Basically you pop that up and it separates the door. You close it, clip, clip. If you're inside your van and you want to lock yourself in, all it is, turn the chrome knob. It's, it's locked. Open it, click it back, handle up, and it'll open it. And this is how you operate the steps. So basically, just pull out and lock it into place. And when you want to put it away, slightly lift and just push. On all your vans, guys, you have recovery points. Now these, these recovery points are rated to three and three quarter ton. All right, so therefore, basically what you've got to do is unhook from your car and hook up to these for safety purposes because some good Samaritan might come up behind you, want to drag you out, and these can actually get ripped out because you're trying to snatch too much out of there. All right, so basically, unhook from your car, recovery points will pull you out, not a problem. On the XT family, your toilet and shower is at the rear, right hand side. Okay, so your cartridge for your toilet is at the rear, and it's the same as on the XT12 and the 17. So basically, you do this. To fill, you need to just pop that down ever so slightly, bring that out, undo the top, water in there, fills up a little reservoir, all right, and the water level comes up here on the side. So you know when it's full and when it's empty. Also, once it's full, you put the cap on, just pull it down ever so slightly and replace it back under there. So just swing it back away. Okay, so also when you're taking the unit out, 
It's just a little green level down the bottom, a little um, hatch. Basically lift that up and slide that out. You'll hear the unit itself closing this back up, all right, because it's a level inside that basically just closes that back up. When you pull that out, hit that button, depressurize, put the wheels down on the ground, pop the handle down, it extends, and all you do is go on for a walk. Once you get to your dumb point, obviously nozzle up, unscrew the top, comes out, you actually physically got to pick it up and turn it upside down to get all the gear out. Once you've done that, place it back on the ground, lid back on, turn it away, pop the handle again and go for another walk, come back to your van. For the chemicals as we go in here guys, this is a little measuring cup. So once you've done all the chemical things guys, basically pick it back up and slide it back home. On your 16 family van, okay, this is where your kitchen's located. So you pop that open, that's got a safety lock, blue tab down, grab the handle and pull it out. You got two bungee cords, one front and back for your extra bench space on the rear of your kitchen. So that's your extra bench space. This slips up and comes up, that acts as a little windbreak. So when that is up and that's up, there's your little windbreak that you got for this model. On here, you've got a little drying rack. So basically, once you pop that up, there's a little pin you pop out, that pops down, pop that out, that pops down, in place there, in place there, there's your little drying rack at top. You got your kitchen leg there. It's just a support leg. Basically, it just goes in this back corner here. Lift it up ever so slightly so it's all square and just do it up. So hooking up your kitchen, basically in here, you got your water, hot and cold. That's a compressor bayonet, so put that end in and pull it back over the top. Your gas line comes out of um, underneath here. Again, it's just a bayonet. You take the cap off, push in and turn to your right. Your 12 volt comes out the same place where your gas does, so it comes out through the bottom. Pass it out through the bottom and just plug her in. Also, with the hole that comes out through the knee, underneath, basically your grey water from your sink. Okay, dispose of it properly into a bucket or another little hose attached and let it run away. Okay, so with the kitchen as well, you've got hot and cold running water here, but again, for if you want your hot water, you've got to light your hot water system, your trim or hot water system. And don't forget, it does take about 15 minutes to heat up. Okay, so lighting the kitchen. Basically, gas on, hit your 12 volt spark. Once you light your gas, make sure you hold it for five seconds, six seconds, okay? And then let it go, and it should stay lit. On the drawers on the kitchen, guys, on the 16 family, basically, they've got soft clothes. Handles to fold down. On your 16 family, okay, your front box here is where you'll find your fridge lock. All right, so obviously you open her up, your secondary lock, take off, push down your blue button, handle pull it out, let that blue button go, and drag her out. It locks into place. These are your tie down points through here. And I've just wrapped them through the handle, pull them down, and do exactly the same at the back. So she doesn't slide around in travel. You've got two access points for power, one being a 12 volt and one being a 50 amp Anderson plug. Okay, so they're just here tucked on the right hand side. On the left hand side, you've got a touch light so you can light her up and you need to see. Just mentioning about the fridge slide as well, guys. Yes, your kill switch, main switch, must be turned on and also your fridge on there or else it doesn't complete the circuit so you will not get power to your fridge. So therefore you will have hot beer and such. Your electric awning outside is hooked up to your main battery. All it is, open the door, hit the button, opens up, it's all electric, so you don't have much to do. But when it's coming out, if any wind is hitting you in the face, be safety conscious and just hold your awning. 
okay, because what you don't want is a massive gust coming and ripping this clean off your arm caravan, all right? So two or three fingers on here. You don't have to have any pressure on it, all right? It's just there just in case. And while you're all holding onto it, guys, what you don't have to do is you don't have to run over and hit the kill, um, stop button. When it gets out to a certain point, it will stop automatically. So retrieving your legs. Pop one end, slide your hand along, pop the other end, straight down. And I find it the easiest way is to stay on the inside of it, okay? Undo that, you can use that as a slide to slide it out. All right, extend it down to here. The bottom goes in, slip that back down. And once you get to the desired level, the inside one, you just tighten her up and lock her into place. With your electric awning, you've got two options for your legs, okay? So when you do pop it off, if you do not want to go back to the van, undo, straight down, you peg it to the ground. These two little duvalackies, all right? One is your manual override for electric awning, right? And this is your adjusting tool. So basically, if you pull out these wires or something happens where you can't use the electrics on your electric awning, this is your manual override. Basically, it just goes up inside here and you wind this. And then if something did happen, it comes in wrong, it gets thrown about on the wind or something, this is your manual override for your adjusting tool. And they sit side by side like that up inside the cradle in here. Okay, obviously guys, you've got to unpeg. You loosen off here, that slides back up, all right? Have your right hand up here as you're pushing that in as you swing it up. So it slips in there. Make sure that this is square here, so it folds in nice and flush. Pop that lid, all right, it comes out. You slide that up, you lock it off, swing that up. Make sure that that's flat at that end, clips in. And then you come over here, you got open and close, so therefore you just push the button close and it comes in. On your 16 family, your electrical panel is in the cupboard at the top, next to your toilet, you open it up, your main switch, turn on, all your lights come on. Uh, then you've got each one of these, you turn on and off at will, whichever one you want to use, okay? You have the circuit breakers up the top, if something's not working, you hit it twice just to make sure it resets, all right? You've got your water display unit there, so you've got your tanks, and your grey water tank there. Just in this compartment as well, you've got your voltmeter and your amps. Obviously, amps are what draws, volts are what you got. So with that volts, um, just make sure at any present time you never drop below 12.2. You're at 40%, you're endangering to losing your AGM batteries. They're not a battery where you can run them dry and bring them back. You may get away with it once or twice, but you won't get away with it the third time. So therefore, you've got to come and check them at all times. In your 16 family, underneath your bottom bunk is where your battery situation is. There's three batteries in here at the moment, all right? So you've got 300 amp hours, so they're all linked together. Where your batteries are as well, you've got one of the master switch. So if this trips out or flicks off, that's gonna happen, all right? So there's a little bar underneath that trips out down the bottom. So you just flick that back up, everything comes back on. Your power source on the outside of your van is 15 amp. So when you get a 15 amp lead, you can plug it into the front, so you got 240 in. That comes in handy, one, if you want to top up your batteries, and two, if you got air con, you have to be running on at least a 3 kVA or 240. And don't forget, when you're plugged in here, it's only when those uh, 10 amp poles inside that they come alive. Also, when you're plugged into 240, guys, don't have your um, extension cord coiled really tight. It's got to have a little bit of space about it. So meter, meter and a half, as in loop wise, the RCD units will trip out and such, but so long loops. Now, whilst at home, if you haven't got a 15 amp at home and you need to charge it, go to Bunnings and buy yourself an adapter. It's called an amphibian adapter from 10 to 15, because you must maintain your batteries in your van. In the 16 family, your RCD unit is above the door on the left hand side just beside the cabinet. All right, so it's just up here to the left once you, once, once you enter the door. 
All right, so if any electrical problems, things aren't working, come here and check this first, it hasn't tripped out. In your 16 under your bench seat or your single bed, all right, here is where a few of your electrics are as well. Inverter, DC, DC charger, and your 240 charger. Okay, so your 240 charger, obviously here you've got a switch that turns it on. And this is where you can relate to. It goes through your battery type and so forth. Just at the top there, it's all calcium, gel, AGM, and so and wet battery. So therefore, if you do want to change out your batteries, you get onto that setting. So basically you can choose what's going on in there. Your IDC25 DC DC charger, obviously that relates to solar and so forth. Charging light, that'll be in green. That means it's working. That's working off the solar. And then also if it goes to the alternator, which is off your car. Okay, so if that flash is red, you mean you know there's a little bit of a problem. If it's flashing green at the top, you know she's working fine. And obviously your thousand watt modified inverter, you gotta turn that on when you need to, when you want to use it, because what the inverter does, it converts all your battery energy to 240 energy. That's why you've got to plug into here. That's why in any van, if you've got 10 amp poles inside, basically they do not come alive until you're plugged into 240. This changes the 12 volt to 240 so you can plug things in. So this is a thousand watt modified. So basically anything that you want to run, you check on the back of any unit. If it runs more than a uh, thousand watts, well, you can't use it. If it's under that, you're gonna be fine. And you also have a master switch, that's here. Um, if that le little lever there is popped out like that, that means things are, have tripped out. You pop that back up. All right, that's one of your master switches. And also you've got all these circuits where um, positive and negative come onto there. Um, there's a little button on the inside of here, so that's how you reset everything, okay? So you just push that button back in just to make sure it's all working fine. So under your water tanks is basically your remote for your projector unit. So you can change it all up from internally. And also in this hatch, guys, is basically this is where you put the cords through if you want to use your inverter. So just pop your cords through there, plug it in your inverter, so there's no cords hanging out at the top of it. So you can close it and you're not going to get a shock if you sit on. On your 16 family, you have an adjustable table inside. So it pops up and down and around and around. So basically, if you need to funnel someone in and out, get closer and so forth, but it also doubles as that third single bed. So there's a little button on the floor, you push in, it goes down, the cushions come over to make that third single bed. So this is how it sleeps five. In your 16 family, once you come in the door, you have a 152 litre fridge, okay? It's a two way fridge, so 12 and 240. All right, on there you got a little lock down the bottom that you undo, pops there, little handle here, pull it to the front, open her up. Okay, so your little freezer in there that's got its own little door, it's freezer capacity and fridge. Once you turn it on up at your mains, you turn it on here. Uh, and then you select how cold you want it to be. Also under your single bottom bunk is your Truma hot water system. So your Truma hot water system boiler is here. You've got inlet valves there and you've got your sea flow pump just here to the left of that again. With your Truma hot water system, make sure it's turned on in here. Your gas is turned on at the front. The ignition point just here at the front and then just hit the button, make sure it ignites, and then 15 minutes before you've got hot water. If the red light comes on, you just got to reset, then have another go at it. Once you've turned your Truma hot water system on inside, this is your exhaust. Open this up, now it shows you how to take this off. Basically push your thumbs in, it splits the top, it comes off. So you must release this as soon as you turn your hot water system on. So once you've lit your hot water system and you've taken your cover off, what I would ask you to do guys, is basically come and check it at two minutes and eight minutes. Come and check with the back of your hand if heat's coming out, all good. If it's not coming out, redo it. Because basically with the lines that aren't purged properly, it'll light, 
because an air block in behind it, it's going to go out. So you might have to go and do it two or three or four times. So the air, um, air comes out of it and the gas comes through the line. Just in your 16 family as well, you've got a diesel heater, all right? So in your diesel heater, obviously again, you've got to have it turned on in your electrical department up top there, and then hit the button. All right, hold on for a couple of seconds. Basically, you've got to have it at high for about or probably three or four minutes and then turn it down to the temperature you would like and it just keeps the room nice and, nice and toasty. This is your vent here so basically it'll come out and warm up the room. Basically it's attached to the diesel heater which is in the compartment externally. But it's when you turn it off, you turn it off here but you don't turn it off with the main switch until it's wound itself down and it winds it down. It's like a little turbo. It winds itself down, so it takes about two or three minutes to wind down. Your tank is at the front. If for some reason you run out of diesel, please do not come out here while it's running and put more diesel in it. You have to let it shut down, you have to let it wind down, and then come in here, pop more diesel in it, and then go back in and light it again. Please do not fill it up whilst it's running. So on your 16 family, you do get aircon, okay? So with your aircon, it is only run on 240 or at least a two and a half KVA Jenny. So you have to be plugged into the 240 outside to run your air. It will not run off your battery system. You'll have two Sirocco fans. You've got to have it turned on, okay? So there's a switch panel on the side of Sirocco fans. You've got to touch it three times to make it work. So on, a little bit faster, a little bit faster, and then off. All right, you've got a little, what's that down the bottom? So it undoes, moves it around and so forth. So you can position where you want the airflow to go. So when you first come into year 16, you've got light switches here. Okay, so one is reading lights for all the beds. Another one is down lights from the roof. The other one, toilet light there. The other one has a little blue floor light. So therefore everything still can be out and you'll have a little blue light on the floor just so it gives you a little bit of light. Um, but when these are turned on, you can turn these off individually if you like. All right, so if someone wants to go to bed at any point in time, they're finished reading, just turn your light off. You don't need to turn it off here. Also on your 16 family on their bunks, they've both got a 10 amp double pole and also a USB and a 12 volt. So basically they can plug in their little iPads, computers, whatever, to 10 amp or 12 volt. All right, and then use their light for reading as well if they really want to. With the internal windows, guys, it's got little gray buttons there. You must push that button in and move the handle. Push the button in and move the handle. Please don't just yank on it because you'll break the internal lock. All right, the window itself goes out to three positions. All right, once you hear the click, stop you go too far you release it it'll come back in all right so therefore we go out to do that i released it once you feel a click stop i want to release it bring it back in all right you'll hear that click well you know it's locked back into place also when you close and guys there is two little latches in here where you can go into the center or go completely on the inside of it. Right, if you go into the center, it leaves a little gap for ventilation, all right? So at night time, if you want a little bit of air, fine. But when you're traveling, it's got to be on the inside one, the internal one, or else you're just gonna fill up with dust. Also, with your window, you have a fly screen. It comes down and you have a privacy screen that comes up which you can go half and half if you wish. Just clip them together as such. All right, separate. Just go slowly. Don't be in a rush. You're on holidays, you don't need to be in a rush. Just push them away slowly, that's all you need to do. In the 16, above your main sleeping area, you have a hatch in your roof. Basically, it's got the same tabs as the windows. So basically, you've still got a button, you've still got to push it, on both sides, you've got a handle that swings down and then you can open it up and push it up. There's only one setting, it's either opened or closed on this one. You have got privacy, 
and also fly screen. You can do a 50-50 if you like. But what I will warn you against is when it's closed up and you're not using it, okay, and you have your blind across, what it does, it builds up a lot of heat, a lot of hot air in between the two surfaces. So what I will tell you to do is not have that closed up. I wanna let the air come through, not with the hatch open, but so it circulates a little bit more. So you have a 40 degree day in between those two uh, areas, it can go up to 70, 75 degrees, all right? So just make sure that that's open so that filtrates through so you don't get any warping of these two units. With your shower hatch, guys, what it is, you got a little button on here, turns the light on, you got a little swivel. So just turning off that, opens up the hatch. You got a neutral switch in there, you've got an external fan that takes that out, or you got a one that blows in. All right, so you can just have it any way you want. In each one of the vans, 16 family, and all the vans, they come with a smoke alarm. So that's compulsory, you have to come with a smoke alarm, but it's up to you as the individual to make sure you change your batteries out. All right, so yes, it comes with a smoke alarm, but you have to change it out. It's placed in certain places in the roof. All right, each van is a different spot, but you'll have a smoke alarm in every van. Also in each van, guys, I mean, one of the drawers, there'll be a little booklet, all right? Each booklet will contain whatever the van has got, be it hot water system, diesel, air cons, radios, blah, blah, blah. There's a little satchel here. It's got everything in there. So just have a read up of it, all right? And then if you need to, you go to your user's manual and you troubleshoot and so forth from there. On your caravans, guys, it doesn't really matter if it's a 12, 14, 15, or whichever. Your tire pressures and your wheels and everything is all part about being maintenance, right? So therefore, you've got to make sure you maintain everything. Each van has its own manual that you can download. So you can get the checklist off there and go through it so that you know what you've got to do at any particular time. Okay, your wheel pressures, all right? I always say, whatever you're running on the end of your car, so it might be 40. You may have to go up to 45, you may have to go up to 50, 55, depending how you weigh your van. If there's too much weight in the back of it, you might have to up your pressures in your tire. Basically, you just gotta maintain your tire pressures at all time. You go on the beach, you drop them to a point. When you come back on the bitumen, you'll take it up, all right? Also, your wheel studs, 14 mil wheel studs, they're the biggest ones on the market. You've gotta keep tension on them. We supply with wheel brace, so basically it's making sure it's taut but not ridiculously like jumping on the wrench itself. So make sure it's tight and you've got to check it uh, at 50, 150, 500. But also you've got to check it every day once you're traveling. If you're going on corrugations for two or three or four days, you check it every morning. It's about a safety thing. On every one of the vans, you have a plaque on the drawer bar that shows you how to do your wheel nuts up. So it's on a star pattern, okay? You don't go around any clockwise or clockwise, whichever. It's a star pattern, so it goes on evenly. Bearings, all right? If you do any salt water, beach work, anything like that, check them more regularly than 5,000, 10,000, okay? It's common sense on all of this maintenance through your vans. It doesn't matter if it's a 12 up to a 22. It's make sure you do the maintenance. So in conclusion, guys, on your 16 family van, all I want you to do is go on the website, download your user manual, so you're prepared for when you take off, and when you take off, make sure you make some memories that you and the family can look back on and escape with confidence.